Welcome back. Almost 44 years later, the name Jonestown still sends a chill. On November 18th, 1978, more than 900 members of an American cult called the People's Temple died in a mass murder-suicide under the direction of their leader, Jim Jones. All but two of the cult members died from a poison-laced purple drink. Those two people were Jim Jones and his nurse. They shot themselves or were shot. Armed guards stood by ready to open fire if anybody else decided not to drink the concoction. One third of the victims were children. Prior to 9-11, Jonestown was the single largest incident of intentional civilian death in American history. And the phrase drinking the Kool-Aid has come to describe anyone who follows an idea or a plan or a leader with cult-like loyalty, no matter how dangerous the result. But decades after Jonestown, are Americans savvy enough to avoid falling under the spell of a charismatic leader? Or could something like Jonestown happen again? I am joined by Ed Norwood. He was a member of Jim Jones Church until his mother physically ripped him away from the cult. Sadly, 27 members of his family followed Jim Jones right to their deaths. His grandmother was among them and they all died at Jonestown. He talks about overcoming tyrants and negative influences in his book, Be a Giant Killer. And Ed Norwood's live with me now. Thanks so much for being here, Ed. You know, I, I look at those pictures of mm -hmm. Jim Jones today. I remember it as a kid. We're not that far off in age. And I look at those pictures and I get the willies. And I can't help thinking, what was it about him that was so appealing? Is it easy for you to remember that? Have you blocked it? Were you too young? Yeah, that's a great question. You, you were asking earlier, how do I feel about this phrase, don't drink the Kool-Aid? I absolutely hate it because it is the front page story and not the back page story. Uh, many of our generation now, they've heard of the phrase, don't drink the Kool-Aid, but they're unaware of the gruesome discovery that took place over 44 years ago. Uh, they don't understand the backstory that over 900 people who were killed there in the pathologist report showed that many of them were forced to drink poison at gunpoint or they were shot with bullets, crossbows and needles. And um, I remember uh, just as a kid, because the, the, the tragedy took place when I was eight years old. And um, I watched how Jim Jones lured in people. There was never a time when um, I can't recall where there was toys and free food. And as you begin to look at the tragedy, Ashley, you, you begin to realize that Jones annihilated the dreams of people who were builders of the next generation. They were radiant jewels for us to showcase to the world. And over 44 years ago, purpose and legacy and dreams and doctors died in the jungle. Uh, and their parents simply, uh, the kids rather, were innocent casualties of Jim Jones by decisions of their parents who were deceived. Parents who went to escape systemic racism or inequality or poverty. Jones told them they could only be free from racial disparity by leaving America. So they run to Jonestown, Guyana to live in paradise and soon find out that it's hell on earth. Yeah, many tried to, to escape um, and, and found themselves absolutely trapped. Uh, so you're a pastor now and I, I think about you literally being pulled, physically being pulled. There was a, a tug of war over your f physical person to get you out of that church. And yet 27 members of your family went there. They went to yeah. Jonestown. They followed Jim Jones and, and they all died. And you watched that day as they were scrolling mm. the names of, of the dead. Yeah. How are you a man of faith? How could you trust anyone again? How could you be a man of religion? Great question. Um, I remember the day vividly when you talk about the names at eight years old, waking up in the morning and going to the living room and watching these names and seeing some of my cousins who I grew up with scroll on this screen. And um, unfortunately, my relatives were mislead, misled by someone they thought was a pastor. But let me make one thing very clear. Jim Jones did not belong to the church. The People's Temple was a cult. And Jones was a socialist and a communist who stomped on the Bible in his services. So I tell people, do not confuse what happened in Jonestown with the Church of Jesus Christ. 
Um, if you remember the bodies that were there, all arranged perfectly uh, after the tragedy took place, nailed to a makeshift wooden throne over the bodies was a sign that read, those that do not remember the past are condemned to repeat it. Mm -hmm. I remember as a kid going into the service one day and uh, the members begin to create a boxing ring out of the pulpit because a young boy who was around maybe five years old had broken the leg of another young girl and his punishment was three rounds in the ring with the eight-year-old boy who pounded him into unconsciousness while many members cheered, but so many watched in horror. It's the fear. And, that's the fear, and, right? That's the fear that, that's that a cult fear. leader will instill. Yeah. Uh, you Absolutely. know, when you say that, remembering the past and we won't relive it, I have only about 30 seconds left, but I have to ask you, Ed, can this happen again? I mean, it's been 44 years and, and a lot of people might not even remember the drink the Kool-Aid expression. Do you think this can happen again here in America? I believe it absolutely can um, because what happened to Jonestown happens in America every single day. We run from problems. We fail, we make mistakes. We stay in comfort zones. We ignore red flags, our power in shame and guilt. We fight bouts of depression. We stay in unhealthy, abusive, familiar and destructive relationships out of fear, and we prematurely take our dreams to the grave. And I'll just end with this. 900 people died 44 years ago because of fear. Fear they weren't good enough. Fear that Jim was the best that they could do. Fear that they were in too deep and he would kill them if they left. And I believe that if people will watch themselves, they can ensure they don't transmit the traumas and the fears that they've experienced to the next generation. And that's why I wrote the book, Be a Giant Killer. Well, I would go to your church, let me tell you that. Ed Norwood, thanks so much for being on. The, the book is called mm -hmm. uh, Be a Giant Killer. And, you know, my heart goes out to you 44 years later, but you are still um, a victim of that. Thanks for being on tonight. Thank you. Appreciate you. Bye. Ed Norwood uh, joined. Thank you for watching. Go to NewsNationNow.com to find NewsNation on your television provider. And don't forget to click the red subscribe button below to get more of NewsNation's fact-driven, unbiased coverage.